Hey Tobi, what do you want to do today? Exactly the same as every day, Bibi. We will conquer the world. Hmm, but we already did that yesterday, didn't we? Really? Then, well, what about talking about creativity? Cars can't fly? We show you that with creativity, everything is possible and that this wonderful ability is in every single one of us. Listen now and learn more about your personal creative ability and its importance for you, for organizations and for society. Hello, dear listeners. Today we are at Siemens headquarters in Munich for another episode of Talking Creativity with a great person who maybe didn't sleep a lot because he watched the Super Bowl last night, but at least he was lovingly woken up by his dog in the morning. Because this much we know, he's a big American football fan. He will tell us today whether he tried to be a quarterback once in his life. Or maybe he rather played another kind of sports because when our guest remembers the most beautiful memory of his childhood, he directly thinks about playing basketball. I am sure he'll tell us later, but both are disciplines that require a lot of creativity, actually. Our today's pot guest heads the CEO office of Roland Busch at Siemens. Among other things, he's responsible for government affairs, security and operational excellence. At the same time, he's also the chief of staff with, with a team of more than 230 people. To be honest, that sounds like more than an office to Toby and me, I would say. In his career, he has worked longer in the US, where he worked 17 years, than in Germany, where he counts 15 years, in a wide variety of positions, ranging from IT to strategy, M&A, corporate marketing, and the business unit, where Toby and me are currently working, digital industries, factory automation. Been there, done that, could be something he repeats all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the American way of, of, of doing it. Yeah. Got the Like yes, <laughs> you could say he has it, seen it all and has a good overview of Siemens. It feels like Siemens has found the perfect all-rounder for this job. How is it actually possible to gain expertise in so many diverse areas? That's really, really impressive. Maybe this is something what keeps him mentally young, because he says he mentally feels much younger than he actually is. Now we have revealed the secret of staying young and fit, I would say. If he had a superpower, it would be the real-time sanity checker. This <laughs> means for him to play back to people what they just said and make them think about what just came out of their mouth. Is that maybe also something that he learned during his job or maybe from the experience with his kid? Let's see what he's telling us. Now, our guest today seems at peace with himself. Is he someone of big words or rather of actions? Has he ever regretted not leaving Siemens and seeing something else? He started his studies in the quiet city of Erfurt and has now arrived on the world stage. We think he has one of the most exciting and at the same time also challenging jobs in the Siemens world. He is involved in all the important issues but still operates in the background. Today we want to talk about creativity and listen to our guest's perspective on how he sees the topic. I want to find out what the hurdles are from his point of view in such a big company and why something new still has such a hard time. Or maybe no time at all. One thing we definitely know because he told us that, he is convinced that he is creative. Now let's find out today. Now, enough said from my yeah. side. Please join us in welcoming the wonderful Alexander Stübler, Chief of Staff at Siemens and Head of Executive Office. Dear Alex, it's great to be with you here today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for podcast. having me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long intro. Wow, that was that very is, long. <laughs> that is a mouthful. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> But did it like describe you in the right way? Was it? I think was, yeah. Uh, it has yeah. It has uh, a lot of the elements um, in the make up what I am and um, well full disclosure I didn't watch Super Bowl because I <laughs> I didn't have a real cat in the fight the last one I watched was the college uh, national championships between University of Georgia and TCU and Georgia won back to back so that's a big deal because my son went to Georgia okay. uh, and studied there so um, but overall yeah you kept it right I mean 32 years with Siemens um, I think most important was that I always was involved in something that really interested me. 
Um, and that's when time flies. Too that's bad. when, you know, you go over there for, seven, for three years, the U.S., and for a sudden, after 17 years, you, <laughs> you go back. And uh, it's really um, fast changing because, because of the things you're involved. And well, this is one of those things, you know, if you focus on, on those things you get involved, if they're interesting to you, then, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, the accolades come afterwards. And, and also you accumulate so much experience and background and get to know so many people that also help you to drive a network, which is important. So I enjoyed that and um, I'm happy to be here now. And it's definitely an interesting place as headquarter. Definitely. Do you miss the time in the U.S. sometimes? Yes, I do. <laughs> What do you um, miss the most? Um, I think it's, first of all, it's the weather mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in Atlanta. So especially in, you know, spring and fall, winter, it's just different. Um, I also like the, just the way, the, the lifestyle a little bit, you know, they're not as worked up about things. A lot of good friends, chicken wings, <laughs> <laughs> the sports. And so there are things that, that I like a lot. But, you know, it's a good combination to have both sides now, you know, being over here. It's just, it's, it's just good to... Um, but overall, it's, it was a great time. Mm -hmm. so. Have you been active yourself in American football? No, or? no, no, no. no. I, you know, as a, like I said, I... I, I, I did uh, track and field. Actually, I, I loved uh, throwing the javelin, the speer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I do come from, I like to throw things, that's for sure. <laughs> and, and then I played basketball. I guess it was a starting uh, point guard in, in my college. Was um, it in Germany? In Germany, yeah, in okay. Erfurt. Nice. So I like that. My big player that I looked up to was Detlef Schrempf. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the first Germans in the NBA. Um, but then I got injured. I got my shoulders dislocated. And uh, there was in uh, 87, 88, I got operated on. And then, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't throw anymore. Mm. So that's, that ended a little bit this kind of part of my activities. So now I'm watching it. Yeah. <laughs> also a good thing. But would you, would you describe yourself as someone or as a person who's pretty curious and loves yeah. to try new stuff yeah. or is it like no I get I, I get bored yeah real quick I get well I get bored you know when when I get into a like a a groove that is con con constantly the same routines yeah. I need new things I need new inspirations that's why this job here is great for me because every day is something different and it doesn't it, it doesn't bother me mm -hmm. um, and By having done this for a while, you know, you, you also have references looking back in how you would think about things. And um, so this, this drives me. That keeps, that keeps me up. I have to say that keeps me up. Um, and you, know, you, can, you can throw anything at me. Um, I might have an opinion. I might have relevant background. But um, it's, it's all somewhat interesting. And being in this office being involved in so many things that the CEO has to be involved with is just the breeding ground for a lot of different things that come your way. Mm -hmm. And they can be, I mean, from silly things like somebody's microwave is broken and they complain. <laughs> to really? The, yeah. <laughs> they complain to the CEO. They sent you pictures of the microwave. What? Still today? Yes. Or, <laughs> That's crazy. Or, a, or the, the oven that where, the, where the front glass exploded or telephones that don't work um, to, you know, to other things, um, to being now involved, you know, in Asia Pacific um, or in Berlin, you know, going on, on, on a trip with the chancellor um, for Roland. So those are, those are important things and uh, those are the things we get involved with. Would you say that this ability you were just, just describing, being curious, being open, being also flexible in like getting everything done, yeah. whatever, other people throw at you. Is that something you were able to do already early in life or is it something you trained yourself in or is it, is it something you're able to train or do you see other people also having this ability? I, I have to tell you, growing up in East Germany um, and the wall coming down at the, at the right time. I mean, you know, I was, I was done with my studies. I, I did math and physics um, 
and, and I was teaching. So for me, it, this opened up a whole new universe mm. of opportunities. And, mm. and I tried, you know, when we, when we got over, I tried to continue what I'd done before, you know, with the, the teaching side. But they said, oh, you have to do, you know, another two years of, of referendariat, of, of, uh, of basically proving yourself. And I said, what? No, I'm, I'm, way too, I'm way too curious to wait mm -hmm. for two years to do something. So I pivoted pretty quickly. And then everything was just new and exciting. You know, I started in IT, this was exciting. Uh, went to strategy, this was hyper exciting. You know, you feel like you're behind the scenes, you have all those... You, you get involved in things, then getting to the U.S. was super exciting. Mm -hmm. And M&A in the early days was great. And then, you know, furthermore, you know, fast forward after 17 years, um, all those projects. And now, you know, since 15 being here every day is, 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 is something uh, exciting. So it's, it's driving me. And it's... It's, it's nice. And now, now you're like... In a position called yeah. chief of staff, yeah. we, we brought a, a little definition and want to hear your opinion on that. So yeah. here we, we, we prepared it and said, someone said, as a kind of air traffic controller, the chief of staff helps the CEO and his management team to achieve more security and orientation decision making. As an integrator, he ensures that internal boundaries and obstacles are overcome. As a communicator, he connects the top management with the rest of the company as an honest interlocutor. He helps the CEO to be far-sighted because he is not guided by particular interests. And as the CEO is confident, he acts free of any political agenda of his own. So yeah, when I, let's start with the last one. You know, yeah. I, I explain to people why I also respond like I respond. Is I, I'm, at the top, I'm at the end of my career. I don't want to be any more than I'm, I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to... To make sure the CEO is um, is taken care of, and he is he's on a straight line, is very close to reality, mm -hmm. and articulates things that can hold also in the future. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't get into commitments or into into some weird places where um, you know reality doesn't meet where he needs to go. I also have this somewhat agreement with Roland, we'll do this um, until, you know, as long as we have fun and we do have fun. So what's important? Important is to be the, the honest broker. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit, uh, my, my job is to, to tell him as it is. Okay. And, and to... Do you think that's a big challenge to really get the reality and truth out of the company as a CEO? Well, it's, it's certainly, you know, I mean, you know, if you go into a workshop or into a presentation, there's, you know, the, the material is sanity checked, is, yeah, is hmm. you know, is created to all kinds of motivations. And sometimes you just need a, just an unbiased voice. And that's one of my jobs is to provide this unbiased voice, to give them reference Another important job is to keep also some wild ideas from him. It's also to, to, to filter, mm -hmm. whether it's external Like the microwave inquiries, example? Yeah, <laughs> or external inquiries or ideas for engagements. Um, they all have to fit somewhat together. And if they're too random and if they're too misaligned, then it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. Then uh, preparations are very important, you know, making sure that, uh, that he's always best prepared and he's a good reader. Um, he can comprehend a lot and uh, that's why he's also involved in so many things. And, um, you know, we also manage the board meetings and the board workshops. So there is a, there is a space where we, we also drive agenda, we, mm -hmm. we manage agenda, we... We look at formats that are great. We do three times a year a management meeting. We call it day one forum in order to keep the reference to work really his day one mm -hmm. and the spirit and the spirit of the narrative, the spirit of kind of the new beginning of a tech company, keep this up. And um, those are things we're good at. And we have, you know, in, the, in CE, uh, we have all those, we have the relevant 
capabilities, also with government affairs, because a CEO's job is also to get involved in uh, informing politics and being a face to the to governments. And um, I think we established Roland as kind of the light wolf to the German industry. So a lot of the the Dux uh, CEOs line up next or behind him. Mm-hmm. That's a very interesting position he we, we got himself into, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, those are those are those are the the key roles. I have a question. Go ahead. Because in my mind, I'm just wondering, how do you manage that, or how do you decide on what is right or wrong, or what advice you can you can give to the CEO? Do you? Is it from out of your experience? Is yeah. it from talking to other people? Is it from reading? Is it from how do you how do you do that? It's <laughs> this is a good question, and, and um, there's no I blueprint. Was, right? Well, I was once yeah. I was once in a in a leadership training, and you have been assigned a coach. There was a, like a coach that was in the leadership training, and and I had a conversation with him, and and we got also to um, talk about how do you, you know, how do you improve your self-confidence mm-hmm. and it's you're at the stage where you, you don't have to second guess yourself anymore mm-hmm. so if you constantly second guess yourself is this what i think right or not i mean you can you can get into a hamster wheel and never get out so yeah. you have to trust that your level of experience and your basis of decision making and commentary is right for the moment mm-hmm. and you get the reflection from either people saying, yep, that's right, or, you know, I agree. And um, if you're off, you you know you're off, but over time you get more and more confident and, and, uh, and reflection that whatever comes out of your mouth is okay. It's, it's, it's for the moment right. And I also, you know, this was also tested a little bit between, you know, the CEO and me. He sometimes asked me, what do you think about that? And then I told him what I think about it. And he said, oh, that's exactly what I think. Mm-hmm. So, and he, he's done this several times where he also tested a little bit, tested what I, what I think about things. And, and that, that, is, that has improved the alignment. So, mm-hmm. I, you know... For how long are you working with him right now? Eight years, since 15. Okay. And it's, I mean, the, the, those eight years flew by. It's yeah. unbelievable. I think I never worked for anyone for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. it works. Uh, seems, how, to be. Right? <laughs> seems to be. So now, now we need to bridge the gap kind of from, I think that's an yeah. impressive already uh, insight into this world. I think a lot of people have no clue how that works. But now that we're talking or at least try to talk about creativity today because our podcast is called Talking Creativity, uh, we need to ask that question. First of all, uh, the Alex, what is creativity to you? What do you think what it is? And probably second part of the question, uh, do you see a lot of creativity regarding what you do in a daily basis? Or, I mean, I guess there's a lot, but just your perspective on that. I think, um, you know, creativity comes from a foundation of curiosity, And if you're curious enough, you have a drive to, to apply, to try out new things, and to, um, and to improve. Because doing the same thing and expecting different outcomes, you know, is hard. <laughs> you have to do a little yeah. different things. And Some people may want to leave things as they are. Which is fine. <laughs> which is fine. There is enough jobs that require steady eddy. Uh, True. And other jobs require mixing up the pot a little bit, you know, changing things, trying out new things, different recipes, different ways of doing it in order to always push the boundary a little bit. And it's for us, you know, whether it's new formats of briefings or new formats of events. I mean, look at the Hauptversammlung, mm. the AGM. This was a new format. Um, we're, we're always trying out new new things. Um, we're trying out uh, you know new avenues also in politics in the way we do things. Um, let's look at the accelerator. Maybe it's it's another thing where we're we're trying new things. 
So it's creativity based, and um, but there's also you have to be able to step into this. Not everyone is born to be creative, which is totally okay. What do you think? I mean, uh, looking into all the statistics from I don't know older ones from World Economic Forum, mm. for example, they always stated creativity as one of the core abilities or most important abilities for people and leaders for the future in organizations. Do you agree with that? And then mirroring that with what you see at Siemens, for example, as I guess you have a good overview of the company. What do you think where we are at right now? Is there still way to go? What's your perspective on that? Creativity is very important, but there's also a, a, requ a need to understand how far can I leap with yes. creativity in the company? Because also an organism like Siemens can only process so much. And this is, it, it's not a capitulation in front of creativity. It is just a reality yeah, check. True. So we got a lot of creative new people coming in. You also have to manage them and you have to give them the right space to be creative within the confounds of what we can do. Because otherwise they get frustrated pretty quickly or they produce things that they may not come out of hiding until they are down the road 90% and then they come out with the idea and they say, Jesus Christ, what is that? You know? Yeah. But you're, you're so right because I, I think a nice example is design of cars, for example. Yes. If you yeah. kind of go too far in the future with your design, people will not like it, right? Yeah. So it has to be creative enough but kind of more in an evolution of the old. That's like a typical way of how they do that, right? And I think the same is true for organizations. But I think that's pretty tough to manage that, right? Because what you're yeah. saying is true. I mean, the younger generations are coming in. They, they are requesting more and more creativity. They want to be really creative. And then, of course, you have the boundaries. And that what makes Siemens very successful, right? The history and being efficient and all that. And then you have to bridge that in a way. And I think that's challenging, right? It is. That's why you need um, a good collaboration symbiosis of the experience yeah. and the Hyper creative, sure. so and both sides need to understand each other, right? The yeah. experience need to need to be open for creativity to come in, but they need to give them room to flourish. Yeah, but also need to give them the ability to to be successful, because you can, you know, if you let them run wild, the chances they will never implement anything is high, because they get frustrated, they they run into you know in the walls. And not everyone understands those. So we have to make sure that creativity and new ideas meet a breeding ground where they can really implement things. Take the NFT that yeah. we did for SBC. That was a, a team effort yeah. to bring an idea in very short time to life in an organism like Siemens that I don't think, I mean, you know, our first, talk with our friends from from technology uh, they were scared <laughs> <laughs> so we had Hell to yeah. we had to just slowly slowly bring him over the bridge show him that there is there is a room for or there is a path to success and a path to enjoyment of this fast forward we did it that was a perfect example of when creativity meets you know the steady Eddie, yeah. and we still opened them up yeah, to true. have something that is really unique. Yeah, that's true. But I think that's, that was pretty fast, right? I know, so yeah. Would you, would you, yeah. It was very fast. Yeah. It was very what, fast. What, what um, were the, the success pieces of, like, what made it a success? I don't know. I mean, I only have this, this perspective as the probably crazy creative <laughs> guy who wants to go through walls, right? That's probably my perspective. But we actually deliberately chosen this topic to really also learn from that case, right? I, so I, I really appreciate your perspective on that, uh, to reflect on what were probably the hurdles we've seen, how did we overcome it? Okay, we also noticed some pieces of the project that were not doable, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess we find a nice way together to, to make it a success, but what's your take on that? I think and, two things, communication. Yeah. I think we communicated right. Yeah. And secondly is we had... Despite all the creative juices and drive, there was also on your part a recognition that, you know, we, we cannot maximize this. We have to optimize it. Yeah. And there's a big difference between maximizing and optimizing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So maximizing would mean, you know, we we put the royalty on and all those things, but optimizing means let's go as far as the organization can take it. Yeah. And create a success. Create those things. Hand them out. Yeah. And maybe in the next step, yeah, we go another level. True. I think it's a lot about disagree and commit, kind of, right? Totally, yeah. So it's about, okay, yeah. and that was, in, in that situation you were referring to, I think, I, I at least seen my perspective yeah. or my position as the one who wants to fight for it, tries to make it happen, because in the whole project, I got the feeling that if I don't push through, that will not happen. But then, of course, I, I notice, okay, that's a, f a topic that we're not going through, that yeah. we have to stop here and say, okay, yeah. let's, let's find that way. And as you said, like, put it on the side and say, okay, let's try it in a second try and another project or whatever and learn there. But, yeah. So I'm, for everyone with uh, highest levels of creativity, just make sure you, you also find alignment with folks that can help you to implement. Yeah. And, and, and listen to their advice. You know, don't take everything as a critique on your creativity, on your idea. There is the good spirit will help you to make it happen. And again, optimize, don't maximize. Yeah, true. But I can just uh, uh, give that compliment back to you. And because what I really appreciated is that you were open for that. And I yeah. guess a lot of people outside of CM would not say, uh, people are open for creativity. At least that's very often not the perspective people have or the, I don't know, the image of Siemens. But I think there are a lot of people inside of Siemens, like you and others, who are really open to try new things. But you, you have to find them. And then you have to find those, how do you say that in politics? You have to build your, how do you call that? It's uh, a coalition. Yeah, coalitions, right? Yeah, you have to, and then yeah. in a way, what we did was bridge the creative new spirit, new ideas with experience, with totally. what is doable, what yeah. not, what is, where's the risk too high, where can we like go through? Yeah, I think that was a nice example where we could learn a lot for, for creativity. But then that leads me to the question, um, what's, I mean, we talked about that, but in your daily job, mm -hmm. how much of what you do is related to kind of, I don't know, pushing forward or pushing through some new ideas, trying new thing and what is like preserving the status quo? Is there any, any yeah. perspective you have? How do you balance that? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have to preserve status quos. And I'll give you an example. We, we just established with Roland coming on, on as a CEO, we established a new way of working within the board, mm -hmm. which is from fixed scheduled board meetings that are put on a calendar a year and a half in advance. And when you get to the day of the board meeting, you try to fill up mm -hmm. topics yeah. to a completely agile working where we capture the topics in a tool we built with Mendix. Mm -hmm. And then the tool takes the topics um, based on when it needs to be decided upon, who needs to be in the meeting, how long do they take, and then we can we can overlay them and create board meetings. And those board meetings can be virtual because we learned it during mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic. So this this is not a hindrance anymore. This is a operating mode. Um, and this way we can have board meetings when we need board meetings and not have board meetings when they're on the calendar. Okay. And we need to optimize this further and further, and it works beautifully. So this is a status quo that we established and that we will keep and improve. But first of all, it was a creative new idea. And Absolutely. A new way totally. Of, of doing totally. It, right? But totally. why did you come up with this idea, or why did you think you had to change something? Well, because the um, there was clear feedback from the board that okay. this is board meetings weren't fun anymore mm -hmm. because okay. they were stuffed with stuff that you mm -hmm. said in the day and he said, why am I sitting here? Why are we talking about this right now? Mm -hmm. Feels like it's just, it just fills time mm -hmm. and doesn't serve the purpose of managing your time wisely. Mm -hmm. And um, with the way we do this now, it is sometimes it can be very agile when you know an M&A kind of project comes in between and sometimes you have vacation or, you know, or school holidays. It can be sometimes a little rough, but you know we manage. 
but it serves the purpose beautiful again you can be anywhere you can dial in and and we make decisions and it, it works um, and the second part of the way they work together is in workshops uh, which is a b bit more not unstructured but you know we have topics and we can take more time mm -hmm. and those workshops are like a deep dive in a topic yeah, those are important to to develop the understanding of the topic in the board yeah and there were no there were no decisions made there okay it prepares the board to make the decision then in a board meeting okay got it it's like a full day workshop thing yeah or? yeah and do you have like an example topic two or three oh, accelerator okay or creativity coming up soon well potentially <laughs> So you really take your time to discuss in yes. an open way, just yes. discuss new ideas yes. or topics. Absolutely, because you have opinions. to you have mm. to foster the understanding of a topic. Otherwise, you yeah. cannot make decisions. That was not existent before you changed nope. that. Oh, really? Nope. So, <laughs> um, so this is important, and what you know, what certainly on the on the creative side. I mean, you know, our communication again. You know, Chris and team are highly creative with with good ideas, great ideas. We have ideas on how to position in certain ways. We have ideas, you know, what to do on the government affairs side. So all kinds of things. And uh, I certainly, you know, within our CE organization, we, we always look for, for new ways of doing things. We look to optimize, you know, the way we work because we have a high number of topics that come our way and we have to just make sure we can manage them without exhausting people. Mm. So we have to work not harder, imagine. but smarter. Yeah, you can imagine that. How and many people are involved in this, like managing that? We, we heard a number of like 230 people. It's like, well, every, yeah, I mean, that's that's not, well, but there are like 180 security okay. people. Yeah, <clears throat> so REST so is focusing on, on... REST is managing board office. Yeah. They do the briefings, the, the board calendar, the board meetings. The topic WEF, World Economic Forum, the managing the, the day one forum, then we have government affairs, okay. 40 people. And then now um, I also have uh, Operation Excellence, which is, which is a good capability to have for sales, service and, and PLM. Mm -hmm. And you know, we cross pollinate also, there, there's some ideas in some groups that we can, we can use in others. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. So this nice. is kind of those are the two things, and and again, you know, being open for for ideas is for me is important. That's yeah. why you know the NFT discussion we entertain. But but again, it doesn't mean that we we can we can entertain everything because some mm -hmm. things are just back to I wish this person would have thought about what just came out of their mouth, mm -hmm. and maybe if you put it back and rethink it, they would come to a different conclusion. <laughs> to maybe it's not something <laughs> that the CEO should do, or maybe it's not something that we should do, or maybe it's something we should do next year or so. Yeah. But is, is this also but, something you do regularly? Something with your things you say, <laughs> like you think you yes. reflect on I, the I, things yes. you say, or <laughs> yes, I I hope so. <laughs> but isn't it? I mean, that's one part of of my creativity perspective on. You also have to reject ideas. That sounds pretty harsh, but you have to do it because I mean, you were saying a lot of a lot of topics come your way. So, do you have any smart way of turning ideas down or telling them that it's yeah, it's nice probably, but not I'm not the right person to talk to. I, I don't do think do if that? there's a smart way. You just have yeah. to. I think I just have to communicate it right. How do you do that? How do you communicate? Well, uh, internally, do you know the game Whack a Mole. You know what the game whack-a-mole is? This yeah. is, you have this, this is like on a county fair. Mm -hmm. You have all those holes in a board and then there's a mole coming out and you have a stick and you, okay. mm -hmm. you hit the mole over the head. You try yeah. to hit it, right? And then it comes yeah, yeah. out the other yeah, thing yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the yeah. other thing. <laughs> so that's sometimes how I feel with some of those <laughs> ideas internally. Yeah. Externally, I have to put it a little nicely yeah. into context and... Um, find a good way to explain that maybe not right now or maybe it's really not what we think is important now or you know it doesn't fit into the storyline or we just don't have time yeah. i have to 
you know, more often say no than yes. Yeah. And because otherwise it, the CEO it, gets asked personally and yeah. I don't think he wants to answer those <laughs> questions all day long about whether it's a good idea for him to do that, this and the other thing. So that's something you learn to say no to people, I guess. Yeah, right? and, and, and he I, also sends me, you know, do you think we should do that? I said, no. Yeah. So you like more like a really good team in which you're like probably not, I mean, you know each other very well, yes, so it's yeah. not a lot about communicating, but you probably, just by few words, you already know what the other person thinks, right? And then yeah. it's like a sparings partner in a way. Since it's a lot, you have to quickly say yeah. yes or no. But yeah. I guess you also maybe have topics um, with the CEO where you don't agree with each other. And how do you deal with that? How do you get to the... <clears throat> Um, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think over time we filed off the edges pretty good. So okay. there is not much we disagree, but we, I might have. Isn't that a bias um, already? Isn't, I, I mean, could that be could a Could be. Yeah. <laughs> good, good one. Could be, but I hope not. Um, again, I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it honest and real as much as possible. Um, <laughs> but I think that's, 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 we can. that's the toughest yeah. challenge, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. To be honest and real, and I, I mean, to really get the the truth out of the people, but also sensing and 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 get the right knowledge at hand, and then, I mean, that's tough. It's such a big organization, and then, as you said, it's everything's polished in the end uh, until it reaches the CEO in a way, the the, the communication. But still, be real and and sense and and yeah. I mean, you also have to have, you have to have certain checkpoints in mind. You know, one of them is press. Mm -hmm. What would the press say? Okay. Going forward, where okay. we are, what we have done. Mm -hmm. Is this a consistency? Is mm -hmm. do they start writing? You know, yeah. big question marks about things. Yeah. Totally How does this resonate? How does this resonate with our population, with customers? And so you have like a big outside perspective always in yeah. mind, right? From yes. Siemens. I think that's what a lot of people don't have inside of Siemens. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I feel like we, I have to, we have to, because yeah. that's what, those are the mirrors that hang in front of us. Yeah. It's not our own understanding of how beautiful our world is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's how... Customers see us, how partners see us, how the press sees us, how politics sees us, how what they expect governments from. expect from yeah. us. And um, Yeah, but from your experience now, more than 30 years, right? 32. 32 years, yeah. <laughs> Respect to that. Um, now, do you feel like uh, Siemens has changed over time? in terms of creativity and being open for doing new stuff? Yeah, I think so. And why? Why is that? Why was and there how? this development? <laughs> A lot of questions. Why, how, We only what? have five minutes left, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. Enough time. Um, well, when I started, we spoke German. So the whole organization was had German names. Then English came in. So mm -hmm. this was already, mm -hmm. I think this was already mm -hmm. a good change. We, we certainly, over time, you know, obviously our portfolio changed a lot. And the, the big wholesale changes was the last one was energy carve-out. Mm -hmm. um, so now we are in, in a setup with DISI mobility where I think um, we start to deploy capabilities that also came in from the outside that um, we really didn't have before, like new entrants, like Amazon, Microsoft, mm. Google, NVIDIA, chip makers that yeah. bring in capabilities that completely augment what we do, that help us to get to the next level mm -hmm. that we used to see as, you know, when they came in, that we used to see as kind of uh, enemies and, and competitors. It was hard for us to understand that they're a partner, even though they can... Amazon can decide on a dime to go into things that we do. Mm. They try it. It's hard. I mean, you know, look at Volkswagen, the project, DPP. It's hard. And Amazon learned a lesson that without the customer intimacy and without understanding the customer's processes, it's not enough to 
build microservices and have a bunch of people trying trying hard. Yeah. But for us, it was definitely um, an experience where you had to adapt quickly because the world around you changed a lot. And Roland put it in several times in words like incumbent syndrome, right, where you sit pretty, mm. you count your cash, you build your PLCs, and the world around you tries to put the PLC in a software stack. <laughs> you better think twice what happens here. Or um, we call it different clock speed. Mm. Or well, now, you know, we bring in capabilities where we start working backwards from customers. We're having single-threaded leadership. Time exponentially matters in times of disruption. All those, those, those are words that mean a lot. I think we adapt pretty well. So I'm happy that we also have the people now that can do it, that are part of it. You know, in the past, People were worried about the length of their window treatments and whether the sun comes in at the right time of the day. That was the quality of your office. And that's how they measured each other. Mm. Um, I think those times are over. Mm. And it's, it's, a, it's, a breath, it's, a, it's a breath of fresh air. That's for sure. At least how I feel it. Mm. So yes, we have changed to the good. That's great to so, see. Yeah, totally. But but I mean that's that's a ni nice reflection of what changed and how it changed and how kind of Siemens turned into this kind of company what it is today. What I very often see is, and I think that's a positive thing. I mean, I have a lot of friends working for Puma or Adidas, for mm -hmm. example, and they mm -hmm. were like, f looking from the outside, it's such a modern and mm -hmm. creative company. It's sometimes not like that when you oh, are in the inside. Yeah. My perspective was starting for uh, here with my job at Siemens for like or two and a half years ago, I had the, like a very conservative, um, old school perspective from the outside. Mm -hmm. And now I'm within Siemens and I can say it's way more positive, way more modern and open. There I think go. regarding the expectation management, I think it's better that way compared mm, to totally. what Adidas is doing. So I think that's a, definitely a positive thing. Um, but that's a good, it's good to hear. I mean, that's a good reflection. Yeah. I mean... I think it's good. I mean, it just tells us that we can be probably a little bit more open, more... more Should probably communicate more of this Show it to, to the outside world. Future, yeah. outside. To the future employee population that it's not... You don't get into the, uh, into the dark. You, yeah. Actually, True. it's, it's, it's colorful and bright. Yeah, exactly. uh, But I mean, the new campaign regarding employer branding and stuff is mm -hmm. going that direction, I guess. But also reflecting again, I mean, also, I mean, you did so many different jobs already. You have so many different positions. You've seen people, you've seen projects, you've done. Mm -hmm. um, I would just, again, hear your reflection on, okay, now we talked about how Siemens changed to a more positive, open-minded company, if you want to say so. But regarding doing or trying to do something new, you probably did that a lot of times in your life. But what are the typical hurdles you see in a company as big as Siemens. Do you have you any reflections on is it I don't know, people call it bureaucracy, people don't want to see something new. I mean, a lot of people say I don't have the time for creating something new for new ideas. Um, I don't know, so many things yeah. are around. If you reflect on that out of your personal experience, your personal yeah. project, whatever you do probably today or I don't know, 10 years ago, what are the typical hurdles um, people face when they try to do something really yeah. new? I think, you know, trying new things always butts against a level of inertia that stands in the way. You always have this. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a matter of how big and how ingrained is this. So trying new things, like we said before, requires an understanding of what are the steps to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not always the big leap. It's... You always have Definitely to be. Not, you yeah. have to be smart. Maybe partition your creativity into. Let's do step one, and let's make sure we we check this, and then let's do step two and mm -hmm. three. So don't get too fast, too crazy, because inertia will bite you. But if it's smaller steps on the way to where you want to go, and you bring people along, I always. I always have this picture of a bridge in mind, right? I mean, sometimes 
if you build a glass bottom bridge and it's three kilometers long and people are afraid of heights, mm -hmm. it's hard to get them over this bridge. Yeah. But if you build one where they can see on the other end, A, I can do it and it's even worthwhile going there, then you, you bring them along and from there the experience improves and they can also go the next step. So don't, at the beginning, don't get too wild. Make sure you partition this um, so it becomes implementable um, and not a scare. Because new things are always scary to the to the incumbents, and that's when all those antibodies wake up. Yeah, I, I would like to share an, uh, one an other personal experience mm -hmm. I had, and I would would like to hear your perspective on. Some people keep telling me that Toby, um, if you are focusing on your personal career within a big company, yeah, you will not try so many new things. Yes, but if you really want to move something change something, try new stuff, totally. you should don't, not care about your personal career. Totally. And I'm more the second, I'm more the, I want to change something. And then even though probably I need to leave that company at some point, I want to look into the mirror and say, I did my best to create value for that company. Totally. I'm a firm believer about, of, um, you have to immerse yourself in the things that you feel strongly about, that you have really interest in, Because if you're interested in, you open up your own resources to follow and to bring in so you can contribute the most. Hmm. Accolades and career will follow. But if you sit there and always think about how do I, how do I make the next step and what, who do I need to please in order to look a little better, that's not going to get you far. Yes, there are people that have made a career like this. But I think the, the honest brokers, the, the true contributors, always have focused on the things they got involved with. Maybe they decided that they don't like it and they go for a next project or into a different uh, track, but always follow what interests you the most and don't be scared. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I always, um, maybe I can say this afterwards, but it feels like Every time I took something, a new job, it, it always was like two steps ahead of where I actually afforded myself or thought I could do that. I mean, going from IT and strategy mm. was such a leap that, I mean, sometimes I was scared. <laughs> uh, but I always try to be, to learn fast and get involved fast and, 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 and bring in value. So I become a, a trusted partner, a trusted advisor and and a and somebody they can talk to mm. or then going into the US I mean at the beginning I was certainly confused and and going into five different directions but but there was a point you know when I got involved in the right projects yeah I became I became one that the people were talking to and 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 coming for advice or involving me in things yeah. and um, I think this is important This is very important to do the things that yeah. you feel strongly about it and then career and promotion and all this good stuff follows. One more picture I want to share with you and get your experience or opinion on. I mean, we're living in a good vibes only generation, I would say. So everything has to be positive and especially the younger generations I see actually try to at least live a good vibes only life. I think that's hard and probably not possible. But if you mirror that with a company, you can either also kind of accept a little bit of friction, I call it, right? And conflict and also like saying, okay, that's probably not the right way forward. But I, what I also very often see is that everything is always good. And there's yeah, just, a, just an example. There's a guy in a meeting and says, yeah, I have some slides ready next time. Next time, no slides ready. Next time, again, no slides ready. But The person in charge is always like, yeah, okay, fine, fine, follow-up meeting, follow-up meeting, follow-up meeting, right? So it's about how do you balance this about, okay, respect and appreciation and positiveness in a meeting, right? But also about, okay, now it's probably time to say, ah, that's not how we do things here. Let's change that. Also accept that friction in a way and talk, kind of real talk, basically. Yeah. How do you see that for like generating something new, but also for bringing things forward? Uh, I think it's you know it's important to have 
real-world conversations. And I don't know of a world where everything is just, it's not even positive, but you have to be able to process different opinions and different views, and you have to talk about it. I mean, look, in the U.S., you know, my daughter was at the swim team. She was she was a pretty good swimmer, but, you know, they had participation awards. So you got a participation award for just showing up. Mm-hmm. So it's always a high five or most improved, you know. Yes, we can all get the participation award, but at the end, we also want to compete. Yeah. So they also have the best Olympic sports uh, figures, right? And they come from a participation award, but then they win Olympics. So, and on the way, you have to, you have to have good conversations. You have to bring out also controversies, and and it's not all you know rosy and shiny all the times. Again, back to my job, being the honest broker, I'm the one that pours a little water into the wine. Yeah, oftentimes because it's yeah, that's my job. Yeah, that's my job mm. to. And I think especially to for tell it how I see it and tell it tell it. How it is. Especially for, I think, driving new stuff or creative yeah. stuff forward, it's so important to accept that friction. But I, yeah, I think that's still something a lot of people are afraid of, especially if you bring in this career path thing, yeah. right? You, people are afraid of kind of having conflicts in a way and friction because at some point they're afraid that this will like block their career path in a way. And I think that is slowing us down in a way for especially new and creative stuff for real change. And I, you know, I mean, I I observed that being a baby boomer, we always, (laughs) uh, obviously we are exposed to other generations, right? And we, the the Americans Mm -hmm. produce some good images of generations. I think generation X or Y um, was a generation where, the mother of the daughter came in to the to the interview, or no, to the performance review with their boss, with the participation award of, <laughs> of the kid. So, <laughs> so the kid needed the strong support of the mother coming in with That's the participation crazy. awards and all the awards that her daughter got over time to say, this is the whole picture of what you need to look at. So, you know, I mean, this obviously is removed from reality, but, you know... Yeah. Those generations grew up in a different way of being supported and a little pampered and, you know, feel good. But a little bit of reality check comes in the career. And especially if you, if you put friction on creativity, I mean, you have to discuss it and you have to experience it. Where are the boundaries? Because the easy, easy way out would be, okay, let's do it the standard way. No friction. Then I mean, I, I, always, never move. I always like that picture when you look into this funnel of, okay, here's the problem. Yeah. And on the right side is the solution, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially in the early phases, if you really try to do something new, it's a lot of friction. There's totally. no standard process. And in that moment, actually, it's a lot about your mindset, your yeah. culture, how you interact with people, how you communicate. So everything that is pretty fuzzy and not... For us, easy to grasp. That's so important in the early phases. Sure. The 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 later the phases are, the more you are towards like the sales, whatever, yeah, yeah. and and the ready-made product. The more you can like, yeah, I would say um, make it easy with standards, processes, because there's anyway no no friction if you nope. have this the standard process. And right? you learn and you learn a lot. Look at Elon yeah. and her Starship. Look yeah. look at the all the prototypes that he launches and they just explode. Mm-hmm. This is friction. Yeah, this is those are ideas, and you always improve. True that. Coming to friction, Change I really enjoyed time. the talk so far. Yeah, I hope Same it's also no, it's well good, well good time. spent time. Good I mean, time, no? we've heard that you'll have a lot of jobs to do, a lot of things to do. So we really I appreciate good people your time. That, I got good people that cover me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So we're gonna get, go for a beer afterwards. Then. <laughs> but we have a little creativity challenge for you. Go ahead. Prepared. Time. It's not about American football, I'm sorry for that, but All Bianca... Right. Do you like telling stories? It depends on what the story is. <laughs> yeah. Now you can decide what the story is, because we have four questions ready for you. Go ahead. And with the four answers you give, you can create a story for our listeners. Mm-hmm. And it it should not be, it must not be real or anything. You can just come up with any story All right. you'd like Let's to tell. Okay. The first one would be... Where would be your favorite place to live? Somewhere warm with an ocean nearby. Do you have 
any city or anything in mind? Panama City Beach, Panama Florida. City Beach. Beach. Sounds good. Okay, second Google question. It. Who inspired you the most during your career? A person. Tough one. Inspired okay. me the most. It's probably Daryl Delaney, my, my, my last boss in the U.S. Daryl Delaney? What did Darryl he do? Daryl Delaney, he, did the, he was the sector head for infrastructure and cities. Daryl Delaney, okay. A third question, what was your dream job as a child? Coach, sports coach. Coach. And last one, what was the craziest thing you've ever done and nobody would expect from you? The craziest thing for me, what I felt, was that I got picked to build the U.S. federal business. And federal I business. found myself before that, um, when, when we did the reconstruction of Iraq as a U.S. company, I found myself at the Pentagon. I was twice at the Pentagon. And I was standing in the Pentagon and I was thinking, why would they send an East German into the Pentagon <laughs> in the U.S. And, and, and pick him, pick him to build out the U.S. federal business? Why isn't there somebody else to do that? <laughs> and I thought that was just the craziest thing when I was in there. It was okay. just an emotion. Yeah. Okay, now we have the four answers. Do you still remember them? Mm -hmm. or? Now you can just think of a crazy or a romantic or a funny <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> no, the thing is, the thing is, um, what, why we're doing that? Yeah. If you try to be creative, there are different core behaviors mm -hmm. you need to better understand. One mm -hmm. of the behaviors is called associating, mm -hmm. because you don't create something out of nowhere. Right. You basically take two things that have nothing mm -hmm. to do yeah. with each other and bridge it in a mm -hmm. way, build a story around it, mm -hmm. and that's a thing you do in your mm -hmm. head. Actually, associating, mm -hmm. bringing things together. Mm -hmm. So now you're basically forced to bring four things that have mm -hmm. nothing to do with mm -hmm. each other together and bridge it through a story. So it's part of actually creativity. Okay. Panama City Beach, Daryl Delaney, sports coach, and uh, Pentagon. Or yeah. Okay. I probably would say um, I'd say there were a lot of people that I met during you know in the in, uh, while establishing this federal business. There was a there was a good sense of community. There were people from you know that 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 were also helping us in establishing this. That came from from several you know branches of the of the Department of Defense. So there was a good camaraderie in those in those folks where we really had fun. Also associating after hours, went to Army Navy Club and. And had really good conversations about um, well, what also what does it mean, you know, to be to be associated with uh, the Department of Defense, the U.S. the U.S. military, the U.S. government. So I could see a few of those folks and Daryl Delaney because he is in Naples, Florida, um, <laughs> and he's a good golf player. Um, I could see all of us coming to Panama City Beach and enjoying a good time, mm -hmm. playing golf, um, enjoying the camaraderie and, uh, and talking about old times. Nice. Very Yay. good. Yay. <laughs> Do you play golf? Or? I, used, I used to, yeah, but, you know, it's, I'm still, it's, it's an aggravating sport. I'm telling you, it is aggravating because it's hard to replicate anything you do there. Mm. Um, Playing basketball, the, just the just the ball in your hand is such an asset, and then you have this little golf ball being, you know, yeah. a meter <laughs> fifty away from you, <laughs> and you actually just want to whack it. Um, so the Americans and I think also the British have have a little um, advantage because they grow up with this, and also the Americans grow up with baseball. And if you play baseball and you swing the bat. That's already a good motion for golf. Mm. Coming in as a basketball player, it is tough. You rather would like yeah. to throw something, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. You're not able to throw anything. It's just <laughs> tough. So, so I hope I can spend more time doing that. But for now, it's, it's also very time-consuming, I have to say. It's, it's incredibly time-consuming. Cool. Nice. It's a wrap, I would say. Yeah. Only the final big question. 
I have two questions. All right. So one question is, what do you maybe take away from our conversation today for yourself Hopefully or for your work? Or do you take away anything? No, I, uh, you know what I take away is I, I, I met two young professionals that seem to be excited to work for Siemens. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, Toby, what you said is coming in two and a half years ago and finding yourself in something that you more positive that you didn't expect which I like to hear. That's actually what I hope for. And um, it was time well spent, so I enjoyed that. Cool. Do you think we need more creativity or creativity better managed? Are any, any f like... Both. We need more creativity and creativity better managed. We just need to be learning to never forget the implementation of ideas that are, you know, in steps. And... Also, the CEO says, you know, an invention is just an idea if you don't bring it to the street, if it becomes an innovation, you know, where yeah. you have a business um, behind it. And, and this always also um, reflects, is the market ready? Mm -hmm. Is the product ready? Is there acceptance? Is there a pull? Is there a draw? So you can have any idea. You have to test it also with your yeah. environment. How much of this idea can I really implement? How much of this is the organization ready to take? Yeah. And don't be frustrated if it's not the full Monty. If it helps you on the way, it's good. But create those successes for you and your environment in order for them to come over the bridge. Otherwise, they'll not. Yeah. But I, I have to say, I mean, what we're trying to do right now at Siemens is actually foster the understanding of creativity, how sure. it works, all that, what we were discussing today, but also how it starts up here with neuroscience, yeah. all the psychology process in a team, trust, especially the leadership perspective, I think is very relevant, like orchestrating this divergent and convergent processes. Yeah. How do you do that as a team lead, right? Yeah. It's a, a lot about not just creativity techniques. It's also about set up your team. Yeah. It's about how much time do you spend? How do you, how do you do that? And I think that's pretty, at least from my perspective, I can tell you, I think that's a big asset for Siemens, not just because we are tri driving that, but especially because it's pretty unique. I think a lot of organizations don't do that as deliberate as we try to do it right now. Given the fact that World Economic Forum, all those smart people around the world say, and obviously there is a sign for, hey, it's, a, it's an important ability. And I think there's, coming from research, I can tell, I think there's still a lot to learn and a lot to bridge from knowledge into tools and things you can apply in an yeah. organization. I think that's what I can tell you. A wonderful, positive thing. I never would have expected me ending up working for Siemens for creativity. But I, I think I, I also um, I don't know why, but I sometimes feel I get most creative when I have a deadline. Yeah, right. When yeah. things, when I know, I you know, I there's only so much time left, and for a sudden, boom, something comes up. Yeah, it's it's so true. I think there's a misconception that a lot of people think that you're only creative when you have a lot of freedom. Yes. I think, and that is all actually true because your brain is also limited for, yeah. like, you, you're not able to uh, put more processing power in. It's yeah. limited, so we need to be efficient. And this, people call it uh, thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. That's actually bullshit. You always have to think in a box up here yeah. because yeah. just imagine yourself, right? Thinking of ideas, you can, you, you should always put yourself in a box. There's a typical exercise called alternative use test, which mm -hmm. is a creativity challenge. Mm -hmm. Basically, you take a spoon and ask yourself, what you, can you use the spoon for as well? And then giving the fact, okay, you have 100% of freedom and then the ideas arise would say, okay, dear brain, here you have the spoon and here you have the unlimited freedom. Tell me all the ideas. Not a single idea will pop up yeah. because you're not able to process sure. That, sure. that space. So you have to put yourself in boxes and say, dear brain, you have the spoon. Now I'm in the kitchen. And then you can imagine a kitchen scenario, which you are aware of, right? And imagine yourself using the spoon for different use cases. Sure. Then the only thing, and that's the specific challenge in, in, in regarding uh, creative uh, challenges, you have to notice when you're stuck and mm -hmm. say, okay, now that's the end of yeah. the kitchen scenario. Now I don't need to think outside the box, but in another box. I yeah. put, put myself in the box of, okay, now I'm in the garden. 
what can I use the spoon for, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's a lot what we can still learn and, 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 and understand better. And it's in the end actually like a, running a marathon or like a sports creativity. The more you train that muscle, the more you execute on it, the better you become, sure. right? So sure. it's kind of a yeah. continuous effort. Good one. Last question for you. What would you uh, give uh, as a last advice or a thing you want to tell to the people listening to us today? Anything that you think Let's is Let's follow your passion. No. Don't get worked up with, you know, with your with, with static career planning. Just follow, follow your instincts, your passion, and get involved in the things that interest you the most because that's when your the energy that you have and all the capabilities come to life and and you can shine the most you know love it thank so. you very much thank you so much all right I appreciate it thank you for thank your time you. thank you bye bye